to welcome you to this Bible lesson brought to you by your friends at the Caledonia Church of Christ located at 846 Main Street in Caledonia, Mississippi. If you should have a question about this presentation, if you'd like to make a comment, or if you're seeking spiritual guidance with a desire to serve the Lord and go to heaven, please reach out to us using the contact information provided at the end. Your speaker for this lesson is Tim Childs, the evangelist for the Caledonia Church of Christ. And as always, we hope you'll be blessed in the hearing of God's Word. The more we learn about the Lord, the more our love for Him should naturally grow. The Lord is worthy of our love and desires to be loved with all our heart, soul, and might. Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 5. Such a devoted love will prompt us to faithfully submit to His will. The people who wrote the Psalms loved the Lord. Psalms 119 is a psalm enthusiastically praising the Lord and His Word, enabling you and me to clearly see the tremendous value the writer assigned to the Word of God. In all the world, what do you suppose he esteemed more highly? In our previous study, in part, we noted that the penman of Psalms 119 Four things were true for him. In the first place, the Word of God was more valuable than fine gold. Secondly, the Word of God was music to his ears and sweeter to his taste than honey. The Word of God was his guiding light and his counselor. As we proceed in this second segment of our study from Psalm 119, the penman wrote about certain emotions the Word of God produced within his heart. How do you feel about the Word of God? What emotions do thoughts of God's Word invoke? The psalmist rejoiced in the Word of God. Number one, I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all riches. Verse 14, thy testimonies have I taken as an heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. Verse 111, I rejoice at thy word as one that findeth great spoil, 162. It's not unusual for someone to dream about receiving a monetary inheritance, but the psalmist rejoiced in the way of God's testimonies as much as he would if he had received riches for his possession. Consider his mindset when he called out to God, Incline my heart under thy testimonies, and not to covetousness. Verse 36. The Word of God was the greatest inheritance, one that created for him indescribable joy. Second, the psalmist delighted in the Word of God. He affirmed this repeatedly. Thy testimonies also are my delight and my counselors. Verse 24. Make me to go in the path of thy commandments, for therein do I delight. Verse 35. Speaking of others who are not so inclined, he wrote, Their heart is as fat as grease, but I delight in thy law. Verse 70. Unless thy law had been my delights, I should then have perished in mine affliction. Verse 92. Trouble and anguish have taken hold on me, Yet thy commandments are my delights. Verse 143. I have longed for thy salvation, O Lord, and thy law is my delight. Verse 174. In bold contrast, people of the world find delight in carnal things. The psalmist, however, distinguished himself by delighting in the word of God, not simply in reading or hearing the word, not just in knowing the word, but in actually doing what the Lord commands through his word. While living in the flesh as a man, the psalmist suffered trouble and anguish due to the pursuit and antagonism of his enemies. Still, he was not diverted from the word of God or the delight he felt toward it. In the third place, the psalmist loved the word of God. Multiple times in this psalm, the psalmist affirms his love for the word of God. And I will delight myself in thy commandments 
which I have loved. My hands also will I lift up unto thy commandments, which I have loved, and I will meditate in thy statutes. Verses 47 and 48. Oh, how love I thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Verse 97. I hate vain thoughts, but thy law do I love. Verse 113. Thou puttest away all the wicked of the earth like dross. Therefore, I love thy testimonies. Verse 119. Therefore, I love thy commandments above gold, yea, above fine gold. Verse 127. Thy word is very pure, therefore thy servant loveth it. Verse 140. Consider how I love thy precepts. Quicken me, O Lord, according to thy loving kindness. Verse 159. I hate and abhor lying, but thy law do I love. Verse 163. My soul hath kept thy testimonies, and I love them exceedingly. Verse 167. The psalmist unashamedly declared his love for God's word. He loved it above gold, yea, above fine gold. Verse 127. His love for the word prompted him to meditate therein all the day. Verse 97. He did not love God's word just a little bit. He wrote of God's testimonies, I love them exceedingly. Verse 167. His love for the purity of God's word caused him to hate vain thoughts. Verse 113. He loved God's word so much, it motivated him to hate and abhor lying. Verse 163. He longed for the word of God. Throughout Psalm 119, the psalmist repeatedly expressed how much he longed for the word of God in passages like these. My soul breaketh for the longing that it hath unto thy judgments at all times. Verse 20. Behold, I have longed after thy precepts. Quicken me in thy righteousness. Verse 40. My soul fainteth for thy salvation, but I hope in thy word. Mine eyes fell for thy word, saying, When wilt thou comfort me? Verses 81 and 82. I am thine. Save me, for I have sought thy precepts. Verse 94. Mine eyes fell for thy salvation and for the word of thy righteousness. Verse 123. I opened my mouth and panted, for I longed for thy commandments. Verse 131. I prevented the dawning of the morning and cried, I hoped in thy word. Mine eyes prevent the night watches that I might meditate in thy word. Verses 147 and 148. And I will walk at liberty, for I seek thy precepts. Verse 45. The expression, my soul breaketh, in verse 20, conveys a sense of deep or strong emotion. The same is true of the phrase, my soul fainteth, in verse 81. A vivid phrase is used in Psalm 119, verse 131. I opened my mouth and panted, for I longed for thy commandments. Is it any wonder the psalmist would stay awake all night meditating upon the word of God? Verses 147 and 148. Why? Why do you suppose the psalmist placed such high valuation on the word of God? His esteem for the word of God was based on the presence, work, and character of God himself. In Psalm 119, the psalmist acknowledged God as his maker in these words. Thy hands have made me and fashioned me. Thou hast established the earth, and it abideth. Verses 73 and verse 90. In the second place, the psalmist acknowledged the goodness of God. He affirmed, Thou art good, and doest good. Teach me thy statutes. Verse 68. The word of God is good because it springs from the mind of a good God, who always does good. The psalmist had experienced firsthand the goodness of God. And yes, we all have. He said unto God, Thou hast dealt well with thy servant, O Lord, according unto thy word. Verse 65. For this reason, the psalmist could say, Thy judgments are good. Verse 39. Why? 
because they emanate from a good, good God. Number three, the psalmist acknowledged the mercies of God. He declared, The earth, O Lord, is full of thy mercy. Teach me thy statutes. Verse 64. He reiterated this affirmation later in verse 156. Great are thy tender mercies, O Lord. Quicken me according to thy judgments. The psalmist knew God is the source of mercy, so he made a number of requests to receive it accordingly. Let, I pray thee, thy merciful kindness be for my comfort, according to thy word unto thy servant. Let thy tender mercies come unto me, that I may live, for thy law is my delight. Verses 76 and 77. Deal with thy servant according unto thy mercy, and teach me thy statutes. Verse 124, look thou upon me and be merciful unto me as thou usest to do unto those that love thy name. Verse 132, the King James Version translates the Hebrew word for mercy as loving kindness. In three other passages in Psalm 119, they are in verse 88, 149, and 159. In each of these texts, the psalmist appeals to God to quicken him according to his loving kindness slash mercy. The psalmist loved the word of God in part because it reveals the mercies of God. In the fourth place, the psalmist acknowledged the severity of God toward the wicked. Thou hast trodden down all them that err from thy statutes, for their deceit is falsehood. Thou puttest away all the wicked of the earth like dross. Therefore, I love thy testimonies. My flesh trembleth for fear of thee, and I am afraid of thy judgments. 118 through 120. God's treatment of the wicked moved the writer to examine his own life and reverence for God. In the fifth place, the psalmist acknowledged the faithfulness of God. I know, O Lord, that thy judgments are right, and that thou in faithfulness has afflicted me. Verse 75. The psalmist further writes, Thy faithfulness is unto all generations. Thou hast established the earth, and it abideth. They continue this day according to thine ordinances, for all are thy servants. Verses 90 and 91. The psalmist not only praised God for his faithfulness, but he added, All thy commandments are are faithful. Verse 86. The psalmist understood that the faithfulness of God was also transmitted to his word. Therefore, he wrote, thy testimonies that thou hast commanded are righteous and very faithful. Verse 138. In the sixth place, the psalmist acknowledged the Lord's boundless knowledge and presence. I have kept thy precepts and thy testimonies for all my ways are before thee. Verse 168. The psalmist understood that an omnipresent God is an omniscient God and that God was knowledgeable of all of his ways. This is one of the reasons he kept God's precepts and testimonies, for he knew that whether anyone else knew of his ways, God would certainly know. He also took comfort in the fact that the omnipresence of God meant that God was near to him. Verse 151. Because God was near, the psalmist could say, Thou art my hiding place and my shield. I hope in thy word. Hold thou me up, and I shall be safe, and I will have respect unto thy statutes continually. Verses 114 and 117. In the seventh place, the psalmist acknowledged the Lord's unlimited power or omnipotence. It is apparent that the psalmist viewed God as all-powerful and then repeatedly petitions him for help. Psalm 119 contains about four dozen requests made unto God. These were only made because he knew God was able to fulfill them. In the eighth place, the psalmist acknowledged God's righteousness. The psalmist declared, Righteous art thou, O Lord, and upright are thy judgments. Thy testimonies that thou hast commanded are righteous and very faithful. 137 and 138. Moreover, he affirms that God's righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, verse 142, and the righteousness of thy testimonies is everlasting, verse 144. 
Five times in Psalm 119, the psalmist described God's word as righteous judgments. In verse 7, verse 62, 106, 160, and verse 164, he said, I know, O Lord, that thy judgments are right. Verse 75, the psalmist had never seen anything in the world absolutely perfect except for the commandments and teachings of God's word. Verse 96, he described God's word as the word thy righteousness. Verse 123, after affirming that he loved God's word above fine gold, he said, Therefore I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right, and I hate every false way. Verse 128. He also understood that God's word is true from the beginning, and thus he could say, All thy commandments are righteousness. Verse 172. Because God is righteous to the nth degree, it follows that his word is right. Therefore the psalmist declared, Teach me thy statutes. Verse 12, 26, 33, 64, 68, 124, and verse 135. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I have believed thy commandments. Verse 66. Teach me thy judgments. Verse 108. Remove from me the way of lying, and grant me thy law graciously. Verse 29. Take not the word of truth utterly out of my mouth, for I have hoped in thy judgments. Verse 43. In a world filled with uncertainty, the psalmist took solace in the fact that he could trust the word as being right and true 100% of the time. This is why he penned in verse 140, Thy word is very pure, therefore thy servant loveth it. The psalmist acknowledged in the ninth place the Lord's eternal nature. The psalmist understood the eternal relevance and reliability of the word of God. He therefore penned, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven, verse 89. He was acutely aware that God had founded his testimonies forever, verse 152. In Psalm 19, verse 2, concerning God, the psalmist pens, Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. In Matthew 24, verse 35, Jesus says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. The light of God's word has never and never will dim. Let's spend more time meditating in the Psalms this year. Let's spend a good portion of time with the psalmist in Psalm 119. A proper mindset toward God and his word makes all the difference in our pilgrimage here, helping us in our journey to the eternal city where there is no night there. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, we're so thankful to you for this day of life that you granted to us. Father, for every gift and blessing, you are the giver of every good and perfect gift. Father, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for our health. We thank you for everything that you do that sustains us both in a physically and spiritually. Father, we thank you for your holy word, which is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Thank you for revealing yourself to us. And Father, may we grow each day in our love for you. Father, we ask your blessings upon all your people here at Caledonia and your body of people throughout the world. Father, we pray that the kingdom might grow and increase even during these times of uncertainty to your glory. Father, we ask humbly for your forgiveness, for your cleansing of our sins and our shortcomings, that we might be pure and just in your holy sight. Father, help us to serve you faithfully every day of our life till you call us home so that we can be together with you in heaven above the bright blue. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you so much for joining me again in this second segment of our study from Psalm 119. May God bless you in your study of his word. We want to help everyone enter into the kingdom of heaven. There is information available here. But if you have a question, or if we can help you further in finding the Lord's way, please reach out to us using this contact information. We hope to hear from you soon.